Hi, this is Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Chunky Blanket Bag, which is a free pattern you'll find on mooglyblog.com. Please see the links in the description for the yarn, the pattern, and everything else you need to make this beautiful project. To make these bags, I used a USK 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. This one happens to be by Susan Bates. I also used 130 yards of Bernat Blanket, and you can use any of the Bernat Blanket varieties as long as they are the six super bulky weight. So that could be your standard Bernat Blanket, Bernat Blanket Ombre, Bernat Blanket Ogo, and a few other choices that are out there. You'll also want to have a few stitch markers as well as your standard crochet supplies like scissors and a yarn needle. When these bags are finished, they're approximately 10 inches by 10 inches laid flat and feature this great integrated handle for easy carrying. The fabric itself is quite tight, so you shouldn't need a liner, but you could absolutely line those if you prefer. Let's get started making a chunky blanket bag together. I made two chunky blanket bags, and this one I made with one continuous strand of the ombre version. The other one, seen right here, I made using an ogo. If you would prefer to use the same striping pattern, I have included the breakout for those rounds in the pattern. Otherwise, it's written as one continuous strand. We begin by chaining 24, and then we skip the chain closest to the hook and work in half double crochet in each remaining chain across. I prefer to work into the back hump of the chain, but you can work into whichever portion you prefer. So once again, we want to make sure to skip one for the turning chain and then just half double crochet in each stitch across for a total of 23 stitches in row one. So this is what it should look like after row one with a total of 23 half double crochets. For row two, we simply chain one and turn and half double crochet in each stitch across. So I'll see you at the end of row two. And this is what the bag should look like after row two, just two rows of 23 half double crochets. For round three, we are going to be starting out as a row, but then working all the way around this little rectangle that we've made. So this is a great time to bring out your stitch markers. So to begin round three, we're going to start by chaining one and turning again, or you can turn and then chain one, whichever you prefer. And then we're just going to start by half double crocheting across again. So I'll see you when we get to the end, but before you get too far, make sure for this round and the rest of these rounds until we're done, you mark the first stitch of the round with your stitch marker. So half double crochet across and I'll see you here when we get to the end. So we've started round three by working across the previous row, but now we're going to turn and work a half double crochet in the end of each of the two previous rows. We don't wanna work into the side of the row we're still making, so make sure you come down to that previous row and then just put a half double crochet right in the side, wherever it feels good for your hook to go. So there's one in the side of row two, and then we'll come down and do one here in the side of row one. There we are. And then we're going to turn again and half double crochet right across our foundation chain, the unused loop or loops that you didn't work into. So what I like to do is just kind of hold on to that tail end there, tuck it out of the way a little bit so I can find that first stitch there along the bottom. And then just continue to crochet across your foundation chain. And I'll see you when we get to the end of that section. Now we finished crocheting across that foundation chain. You'll see how it really wants to sort of cup up towards me at this point. For this project, we're always going to be working from the right side. So you can just go ahead and use your fingers to pop that right on out. We wanna make sure that tail end ends up on the inside of our blanket. So now we just have two more stitches to make. We've worked across, two stitches into that end, across the foundation chain. So now we want to put two stitches into this end as well. Again, we wanna make sure we don't work into the row we're still making. We come up here to our first row and work a half double crochet in the side of row one and then a half double crochet in the side of row two. At this point, we've worked a total of 50 stitches all the way around for round three and we can go ahead and join with a slip stitch. However, because we're working in the round for this pattern, I really like to put a stitch marker in the last stitch of each row as well. 
This one is certainly optional if you only have one stitch stitch marker. Let me say that again. If you only have one stitch marker, I would definitely use it in the first stitch of the round. But if you have two, go ahead and put one in the last stitch as well. Then we can go ahead and slip stitch right that very first stitch we made. This way we won't mix up, get mixed up and count that slip stitch itself as one of our stitches as we continue to work around. So this is what it should look like after round three. Rounds four through 15 of the bag are all exactly the same. So let's go ahead and get started on round four together. We start again with a chain one, and then we're going to work a single crochet and a double crochet in the first stitch. So we go right into that first one. Let's take our stitch marker out of the way and make a single crochet. And then we can go ahead and put a stitch marker right in that first stitch again. There we go. Get my yarn straightened about, out a bit there. So then we put a double crochet right back in that same exact stitch. Then we skip the next stitch and go to the stitch after that. And that starts the repeat that will take us all the way around. Single crochet and double crochet in the same stitch. Then skip the next stitch. Single crochet and double crochet in the next stitch. Oop. Get my yarn straightened out. There we go. Skip the next stitch. Do the same thing all the way around. Single crochet and double crochet in the next, skip the next. As you come all the way around, that means you'll end up skipping that very last stitch. So you'll want to put that stitch marker in that last double crochet before you join with a slip stitch. I'll see you at the end of rounds four through 15. So here I am at the end of my round four. You can see there's that last stitch and I've finished my last repeat. I need to skip that last stitch in the previous round. So I want to go ahead and move that stitch marker up to that last double crochet and then join with a slip stitch. So as I say, rounds four through 15 are all exactly like that. And we can see right here in this example, the beautiful stitch pattern that this creates. So we simply repeat that round over and over again until we get to round 16 right here, which is our last round before we set up for the handles. To make round 16, we simply chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. Make sure to move your stitch markers on up and I will see you as soon as we finish that round of single crochet. Now on our little sample here, we've worked round 16. Well, we'll call, we're calling it round 16, of course. And at this point is where we bring back in those stitch markers. Now for this portion, we're going to need four stitch markers. If you do not have four stitch markers that you can spare for this, then you can absolutely use small scraps of yarn, whatever you've got handy. We just wanna make sure that we get our handles lined up the right way. And because everybody has a different gauge and tension level, sometimes what works for me might not work for you. So it's a good idea to lay these out and check the alignment before we make those handles and end up with a handle in front over here and the handle in back over there. So the way we do this is we start by counting out our stitches. We're gonna take our first stitch marker here and I've got the first stitch marked and let's count in 10 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll put our first stitch marker right there. Then we want to mark stitch number 22. So that was 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Now I can already tell that this is not going to be a good place for this handle. It's not in the middle of my bag. Why is it so off place? It's because I haven't made all 16 rows. As we crochet in the round without turning, the seam will slant a little bit. And if I had made the correct number of rows, it would have pulled these stitches over this way. So on our little sample here, they're not lined up exactly right, but let's continue walking through it just so we can walk through it here together. So that was stitch number 22. Then we need to find stitch number 35. So 22 was right there, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Put a stitch marker right in that one. And then stitch number 47. So 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 
43, 44, 45, 46, 47. There we are. Now, this is really important. As I say, not only can your gauge throw it off, but you might decide to add or subtract a couple rows. You might decide to make this in a slightly different size. So this technique will work no matter what size you're making, as long as you've got these 50 stitches. So you start by putting the stitches in where they're marked. As I say, on the full height bag, you put them really nicely in the middle of each side and lined up one right in front of the other. And that's what we want to achieve on these. So we can kind of split the difference here. We can see this one's over here and this one's over here. We've got, if we put them together, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six stitches in between. So let's start moving this stitch marker back by three stitches. So it was there, one, two, three. And then we go around and we move all the stitch markers back by three stitches. One, two, three. Of course, that does not include the stitch marker in the first and last stitch of the round. Those are staying in place. This is just for the handles. One, two, three. And we move this one down. One, two, three. And then we go back and check. If we put that front and back side together, straighten out our stitch markers themselves, now we can see they're really nicely aligned. So you can play with that a little bit, but I do suggest you sort of move them as a group like that so that your spacing is the same in between the handles on each side and around the sides of your bag. Once you've got those places marked for your handles, then you can go ahead and start crocheting round 17. We start round 17 by crocheting single crochets in the first 10 stitches. I've got the first one there. I've already moved my stitch marker up. So let's crochet in the rest of these. And of course, that will take us right to our first stitch marker. You can, of course, do this without the stitch markers, but I really recommend it. Scraps of yarn, something like that, to help you line up those um, handles. It's going to be a lot easier than trying to figure out here as you go and as you crochet this round. So there is that first stitch marker, stitch number 10, or wherever it ended up. So we crochet right in that one. Then we can just go ahead and take that stitch marker or piece of scrap yarn out and set it aside. We're all done with it. Now we're going to chain 11 and skip 11 stitches. That's all these stitches right here. So that will take us right to our next stitch marker. Now we are not going to want to work back into each one of these chains. So you don't want to chain these too tightly, especially with this chenille type yarn. You want to pull up a little bit on each of those loops so that you can get back into those. So there's two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And then we skip eleven stitches, which lands us right back in that next marked stitch. We want to make sure, sort of leave this project on your lap or on a table or something as you do those chains so that it doesn't spin around and twist these chains as you crochet. If it has spun around, you'll want to take the time to sort of straighten those out nicely. Then, as I say, we skip those 11 stitches, which brings us to our next stitch marker, and we put our next single crochet right there. There we are. And with that, we can now take out that stitch marker as well, or yarn scrap, whatever you're using, and set it aside. Then we just continue to crochet around until we get to that next stitch marker. Again, just single crochets. You can see I'm crocheting really tightly here. This is a much smaller hook than I usually use with this yarn, which is why it's a little bit more effort to make these stitches, but it really does pay off because it makes a really nice tight fabric for your bag. And of course, that's what we want in any bag that we make. So I'm just going to continue making my single crochets around here until I get to that third stitch marker, which would be the next one. Got a few more stitches here to make. So we've single crocheted in each stitch to that third stitch marker so we can take it out and set it aside. And then we do the same thing. We chain 11 and skip the next 11 stitches so that those handles will be nicely lined up. So let's chain 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. Then once again, we skip the next 11 stitches, which lands us right back in that final marked stitch. Put a single crochet right in there, and we can take that stitch marker out. And then we just single crochet in each remaining stitch and join with a slip stitch. For row 18, we're going to chain one and single crochet in each stitch 
and in each chain around. For this pattern, we want to work into the individual chains, not into that larger chain space. This will keep these stitches lined up really nicely. That said, if you prefer the look of working into the chain space, then go ahead and work 11 single crochets into the chain space. It's your project and it's up to you. You can see here, I've already worked the single crochets into the stitches. So let's work into a few of these chains together. Just wanna to make sure to find that very next chain and put a single crochet in each of those 11 chains. This way, the stitches will be really nicely spaced out. Again, if you prefer the look of working to the chain space, it's your bag. You can put these stitches wherever you'd like to put them. You can even add extras if you find that there's room for a couple extras, and then your handles will stick up and have a really fun sort of upward shape to them. So we just crochet in each one of these chains. And as I say, continue to crochet all the way around in single crochets, then in each of these chains, and finally join with a slip stitch just as we've been doing. After finishing round 18, rounds 19 and 20 are simply chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. You can see perhaps a little bit easier here in this green version. There I worked into each of those chains and then there's simply two rows of single crochet. The final row is simply a round of slip stitch worked all the way around to give it a really nice finished edge. And that's it for making your bag. And that's how to crochet the chunky blanket bag. Once again, you'll find this free pattern on mooglyblog.com. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.